Hey guys, Ryan from Niche Facts here, and today I'm going to quickly go over how to use Missing Letter to automate intelligent drip campaigns. So if you're not familiar with this software, what it does is it plugs into your RSS feed on your website, and then whenever you publish a new post, uh, it automatically creates nine posts over the course of a year. So you could also plug in your old content as well. So you're not just limited to new content going forward. You could plug in any URL from your site and it will uh, produce like nine, nine of these um, posts that kind of extract content from the URL, like images and quotes, and then lays them out for you to approve. So there's a link in the description if you want to sign up. There is actually a completely free plan. So if you just want to try it out, there is a free $0 a month uh, option for you to select. It does come with some limitations, obviously. So for my own site, I use uh, Missing Letter. So right now I'm in the Missing Letter, um, not the dashboard, but this is where you go to approve campaigns. So as you're posting content, like I just uh, published this piece today about how to use iWriter, uh, which is a text brokerage company. And so since it's plugged into the RSS, Missing Letter has this already queued up for me to take a look at. So you would click review campaign. And then you're prompted to choose the hashtags that you want each of the posts to, to use. So I, it'll actually pull out a bunch of keywords that they like, that they think are really popular and um, get you some visibility on the different platforms. And so this is a lot. So I would just, you know, pick a few of these off. Like these aren't popular. So I would just go like this, clear them out. And they recommend using three, one to three. So this is four, but I'm not gonna put this live just yet anyway. So let's just see what it looks like. So now we're in the content review phase and we could see this is day zero, so this would be published immediately. So what it does is it picks out, this is like one example post. So it found an image it liked, it, it took the uh, H1, which is the, you know, the, the content title, the post title, it does a URL shortening there, so it's able to track all the link clicks that input all our hashtags there. So that's one, one. that looks pretty good to me. Here's another one, an image, again, with the H1, the hashtag, the URL tracking, and then they vary it up a bit. Now you got this, you've got this uh, bubble quote. And in my experience, this, this doesn't look so great, this like high contrast, so like you could actually switch the template. You click there, and there, that looks a little bit better. You click it again, and you can kind of cycle through the different templates they have available. So I, I kind of like the this one because this is the easiest to read. But I would actually change the quote because like if it looks too long, it gets kind of it doesn't look so great on some of the platforms and the, the text gets all smushed up. So as I've been using it, this is kind of how I do it. I just kind of filter through and I just kind of pick different like, first I'll pick different images. So I'll be like, okay, I like, I like that as a quote. That's kind of cool. This is a nice image on day 14. I like that. Again, it's the same image, but it's also day 30. So it's not like people are seeing you, you know, they're not getting image fatigue from seeing this over and over. I kind of am biased to images. So I generally just try to because that's the featured image, it's not so great, so I don't use that. I click through a bunch of times. That's not bad, it's all right. See, I don't have that many images in this particular post, so it's not, a, not an amazing example. So you could always just switch to the bubble again. But then again, you know, this is over the course of a year, so you can just use the same images over and over. Then I go into the post content, and I just try to find you can toggle between the content that it extracts. So I just, I kind of just play around and say, okay, there's an image. I'm usually kind of fine just having the H1 there. In the beginning, when the content is appearing more frequently, like that's day zero, day three, 
day seven. You know, for the first week, sometimes I'll vary the 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 actual content of the bit. So you could just click there, and it finds a different snippet to use. The only kind of annoying thing about this that does take some extra time is that for Facebook, because of the the API or the way that they they have to integrate it, I, I even emailed them about this. Uh, you have to actually to be sort of compliant with their Facebook's terms of service. You have to paste it in. So each one has to be pasted. You click save. So you go to each Facebook, copy, control V. So you have to do that for every single one, which is somewhat annoying. But honestly, that's like the, the, the most annoying aspect about this. Everything is very seamless. I really like the design. It's very clean. You can very quickly come up with different variations of these social posts. And then helpfully up here, the campaign summary, you know, it kind of pulls in the settings that you've specified for the campaign. And I'll go to those in a minute. Um, so it just gives like a top level account summary or rather site summary because that you could connect to different sites at, at the same time. And then once you click, I'm actually not going to finalize it, but once you click finish, basically it'll queue everything up. And the last option you have is you could publish it to medium. And that's kind of cool. So if you enable that after this page, uh, missing letter emails you and says, um, that the, your medium post is ready to be published and you click through and you're able to kind of just um, QA, you know, quality assure what the medium post looks like because it tries to pull in the URL and republish basically your entire post. So depending on how you format your particular uh, your content that may or may not look so great on Medium. So it doesn't automatically publish it. You have to manually go in and publish it, which makes sense because, I mean, you don't want to have it look like garbage. And of course, if you're just trying to, like, you know, kind of be a little bit callous about how you publish content, you can't just, it's, this is not something that's going to easily just automate everything to, you know, to spam it out. There is a level of curation involved here, which I kind of like, you know. Um, and that's really how you get the best value out of out of using it. So I'll go to the dashboard now. So if you sign up, you get this dashboard and you can toggle between your different sites. And with the URL tracking, it's pretty cool. It shows you week on week how you're performing. The only thing I don't like about this is that there really isn't a granular view into this data. So I would want to see like what type of content performs best. Like I'm just guessing that this image performs better than say a bubble. I don't know. And I think that's something that's on their, their to-do list. They, they're actually pretty active with development. So you can actually request features. I've already re requested some features. So it's pretty cool. Like they're, they're, they're actually building this out and turning it into a very robust product. The other interesting thing you should you should take a look at is um, it, it lets you customize your branding somewhat. So if you customize your branding, these settings apply to all the content that all the, the different drip campaigns that you create. So like I could say, hey, I don't like this purple look. I just don't like it. I could just exit out. And I actually haven't messed around with like this template library yet. Like I'm kind of fine. Like this looks fine to me. I, I just don't like, as I said before, some of these um, high con. These these the text gets lost when you add the color to it. The green even it doesn't. This looks very clean to me. So you could add these to your library. I've already added these to the library actually. So, I mean, that's something you can kind of take a look at. Basically, it's a one-time thing. You just kind of set it up. So when you first purchase, the first thing you would do would be to link up all your profiles. That's kind of obvious. And then you can kind of tinker around with the schedule. You know, what's your time zone? Do you want to post on Saturdays and Sundays? You could blacklist certain dates. You could even, like, customize time slots by the, the social profile in particular. 
and that's a useful feature. And then you could even choose the different URL shortening. And then another, probably the other important feature I should mention is you can choose default hashtags. And that's really important because um, missing letter will actually suggest hashtags for each of your content. Let's say like for me, for, for my site, Niche Facts, you know, it's really, it's in the, like I just know, like content marketing, SEO, internet marketing, these are three of the, the strongest. And if you're trying to figure out what a good um, hashtag is for your particular style of site, I would recommend hashtagify.me. And then it's free to use and you can just plug in, say what your best, say you're like in the DIY niche. Oh, this is so annoying. Oh, okay, yeah, my my antivirus doesn't like this site for some reason. The DIY, just click and close it. Annoying. So that's that's an, something annoying is happening with this particular site. So you just type in DIY, and then it gives you like how to crafts garden. So that's an easy way to kind of just. Populate these. God, this thing is really bothering me. Disconnect. Christ. I hate this antivirus. I, I record all my videos on my laptop, so uh, sometimes weird little things happen like that with this Kaspersky antivirus. Really annoying. So, anyway, you saw basically how that works. You can just plug in all the best hashtags, it'll populate to your campaigns, gives you extra visibility. So, that's really how I'm using it right now. That's that's really the overview of, of how to use it. And I have a much more detailed post, uh, nichefacts.com forward slash missing letter. So in terms of what I, I guess I should review the pricing. Pricing, like I said, you can get something for free. That's great. I'm on the AppSumo deal, which is actually pretty great. You know, it, it gives me unlimited sites, I think 10 campaigns a week. But right now, the personal gives you the ability to link to two sites and you create four campaigns per week. So it's like four URLs that you can create campaigns for every week. So week one, you can get four. Week two, you can add another four. Week three, you can add another four. So you kind of have to, you're a little bit uh, throttled in what you're able to do and you connect to four social profiles. And it does all the usual ones except for Instagram and Pinterest. And those, I know they're working on both. So we'll see how that on uh, rolls out in the future. And here, here's an example of the email that you get whenever a whenever you post on your site. They they're plugged into your RSS, so they could say this, they shoot you an email and say, "Hey, your campaign's ready to review," and you click right through, and you can review or reject it. So I'll just cover now what I like about it, or actually no, I'll do some tips. So. I've covered a bunch of the, the tips already, but like I said, use hashtagify, that's great. I would say consider outsourcing some of the the um, campaign creation, especially if you're on a larger plan, you can do like say 10 campaigns a week. It is kind of tedious manually clicking through and, and choosing the best uh, combination. So you may want to outsource it to a virtual assistant. And then I also recommend that you review what the content looks like on the different platforms, especially with like LinkedIn. I have another site where, you know, it looks, I want, it looked a little bit weird on LinkedIn. Some of the, the, like the text quotes with the colors. So just make sure you, you check how everything is working and how everything looks. And then you'll get a sense of like, oh, I, you know, what you think might be the best combination on different platforms. So in terms of what I like, I like the intelligent hashtags. I think that's really cool. It's, you know, it, it'll it suggest which ones are best to use based on the URL. I think that's great. URL tracking is good. Like I said before, it'd be cool if there were better analytics. Medium integration is also really nice. That's another cool feature that I mentioned before. I also really like the design. The design is really like friendly and like clean. And I really like that. Functionality, I like it also a lot. Like so far, there haven't been any sort of glitches with anything, and 
you know, if you're if you're a veteran, you know, internet marketer, you know, you you run into these products that just have a lot of weird glitches and it's annoying and it frustrates you. And this doesn't, so far for me at least. So what I don't like, as I mentioned before, the Facebook integration, you have to manually copy and paste each sort of text blurb and save it. So that is the most annoying factor. Analytics, as I just mentioned, it doesn't quite have this sort of robust um, you know, analytics integration that I would want. I would want to see like ability to split test or the ability to see how content performs by type. Like for my site, does it, do images work better? Do more hashtags work better than less? And things like that. That would be really cool. And of course, probably the number one thing people wouldn't like about this is it only lets you post like nine times a year for the drip campaign. So yeah, I definitely understand they don't want to be some like spam tool that gets a bad reputation. So, you know, nine times, you know, it, it could be 18 or 20 or something. I, and that would be, wouldn't be too, you know, aggressive, but you know, it is what it is uh, at this point. So that's my review. I like it a lot. I generally don't like having to deal with social media and this is kind of an easy way to disseminate the content in an interesting kind of colorful way and in an intelligent way. It's not completely automatic, it is curated, so you will have to put some thought into it, but I feel like I get some some benefit from putting putting some attention and care into the social media posts that are being created. Then I don't feel guilty that I'm not promoting my content. I think, oh, okay, I'm writing this and I know a year from now, you know, it's still being promoted over the course of a year. So I like that a lot. That's that's probably the, it gives me some surety and confidence that I'm not just publishing content that gets forgotten and sent into the ether, never to be seen again. So that's my review. I have the link in the description if you want to check it out. I say just sign up for the free uh, platform or the free plan. See if you like it, if you use it, if it's of value to you. And go from there. Maybe you get a personal plan or maybe AppSumo will do another deal and you can, you can jump in on that like I did. I was lucky to do that. So that's it.